we're going to begin to talk about what we can do with the derivative. Now that we've explored how to find the derivative and all the attributes of the derivative function, we're going to talk about what the derivative can do for us in mathematics. And it turns out that for the extreme values on our function, calculus and the derivative are a brilliant tool to tell us exactly where in the plane we have extreme values on our function. So let's talk about some vocabulary first. Global versus absolute. We're talking about maximum values and minimum values. We can either call the highest output because extreme values are output values. The highest output of a function on the entire domain is the global or equivalently the absolute maximum. So global and absolute mean the same thing. On the AP test, they may tell you to find the absolute maximum or absolute minimum, or they may call it the global max or min. I will say if I had to pick one, I've seen absolute listed on the test more often than not. One little nuance of vocabulary I would like for you to think about too is sometimes they just say find the minimum or the maximum. That is an implied absolute or global. The means there's only one. It's the minimum over the interval that they've given us or over the entire domain of the function. So as far as vocabulary is concerned, now we know what they mean by absolute or global. So we know that a maximum value, if it exists, for a function over a given interval or not given an interval, we are to assume over the entire domain of the function, the maximum value is the largest output value, f of x is output value, attained over the interval. This value is referred to as global, absolute, or the. The maximum is the maximum. The same is true for minimums. The smallest output value of the function on an interval or its entire domain is referred to as global, absolute, or the minimum. That is the lowest output value on the interval in question. The max is the highest output. Maxes and mins are output values. Let's put that in your notes. Maxes and mins are output values. They're range values. They are y values. You need to remember that. So how, I wonder, can the derivative help us find these extreme values? What's happening on our function in this particular case? This may not always be the case. But in this particular case, what's happening on our function where a max or a min might occur. Can you see that in this case, that's happening where your derivative equals zero? Also, for the global max. So we can identify the input values. I'm going to put this function in the plane. We can identify the input values where these maxes and mins 
are going to occur because if we put those values into our derivative function, we're going to see that the slope of the tangent line is zero. We're going to see that the function should have a horizontal tangent line there. The same is true for this example. The slope of the tangent line is zero. Now, there are two other cases here, I'll call them x sub 3 and x sub 4, where this is a true statement. So we're going to have to be careful when it asks for the max or the min or both that not every time our function has a horizontal tangent line does it mean our function has an absolute extreme value. We're going to have to differentiate and test and determine which is the highest high and which is the lowest low for the outputs to find the extreme values. The other extreme values where your function might have a horizontal tangent line, again, where the derivative would identify for us by its output being zero, that there was a horizontal tangent line on the function there. If it is not the highest high or the lowest low, we have vocabulary that helps us identify that as well. Again, there are two equivalent vocabulary terms that identify some extreme value on your function that is not an absolute or global extreme value. These are called local maxes and mins or relative maxes and mins. By and large, I have seen local used much more often on the BC exam than I have the word relative. But relative could be used as well. So it is true that we can find the overall largest value of a function on an interval and the overall lowest value. Sometimes we would like to explore all the maxes and the minimums over an interval or over a domain. The local maxes and mins are useful to us as well. Just because they're not absolute or global doesn't mean that they don't have meaning and that we can't use them. So local maxes and mins and absolute maxes and mins are easy for us to find. Here is an alternate graph and we want to talk about how the derivative is going to help us identify where these maxes and mins could occur. Not where they will occur, but what points in the plane might be candidates for where local or global extreme values, also known as extrema, might take place. So we've already talked about we could have extreme values where our first derivative equals zero. We also could have extreme values where our first derivative is undefined or does not exist. In this particular case, we don't. But if this function went way up here and had that sharp turn, that would be the global maximum, the absolute maximum on the function. So not only are we looking for where our first derivative equals zero as candidates for where extreme values occur, we're also going to explore where our first derivative might not exist. That could be a candidate for an extreme value. In this case, we have an absolute minimum where the first derivative equals zero and a local maximum where the first derivative is undefined or does not exist. But just because these two things might occur,
doesn't mean that we are going to have an extreme value. This is the case where the first derivative doesn't exist. Your function takes a sharp turn there. But just because my first derivative doesn't exist doesn't mean that that is an extreme value. There's no local extreme value on this function. And that's what it might look like. Now, the absolute max on this function for this example, the absolute max, the highest high that comes out of this function on the interval that we're looking at occurs at an endpoint of the interval. Nothing about the derivative would help me find this global or absolute max value. The absolute min value, the global min value was found by the derivative, but the max value in this case was found by checking what the outputs were at the end points of the interval. So sometimes we're going to have to take our function, plug in the endpoints and then compare output values. What I would do with this function f of x equals whatever is that I would find the derivative function, I would find the x values where the derivative equals 0, I would find the x values where the derivative does not exist. Whatever those x values were, I would plug those values into my function, f of negative 1, f of 0, f of 1, but I also need to realize that on the endpoints of the interval, I could have a global or absolute max or min. So the endpoints of this interval look like roughly negative one and a half and one and a half. So while I'm comparing these outputs at all of these x input values, I would also see what was happening at the endpoints of the interval and compare those outputs with the rest. And the highest output on this list is my global max, I'm guaranteed of that. The lowest output on this list is my global min, or my absolute min. Now, one little thing that I want to make sure that we know is at the endpoints, those are not candidates. Let's put this in your notes. Endpoints are not candidates for local extrema, only for global or absolute. So if the instructions on the problem say find all values on this function of local extrema, then you're not going to look at the endpoints. If the instructions say find the extreme values, recognize those could happen at the endpoints, and so you will need to compare the outputs of your function with all of the information you garnered from your derivative function.